Hi, hello students. Welcome back to India's most comprehensive online learning platform, Baiju's Exam Prep. This is Anil Prasad Suramputi and in this session, I am going to give you the complete details of the stack organization, that too, the register stack. The stack that is going to be organized within the CPU. The whereabouts of the stack and the information, everything that is related to a stack, I am going to provide you with in this session. Please do like and share this session and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. So let us start. This session completely is all about stack organization and that too the register stack. What is the register stack? Register stack is a stack that is available within the CPU. So let us start. You know that stack is a very important data structure, especially for a programmer. If you ask a programmer which is the best data structure in the world, the programmer would come up with an answer that is stack. Why it is the best data structure for a stack? Sorry, why it is the best data structure uh, for a programmer? Because a programmer life will become very simple if he has a stack at his disposal. Because every time within a program, if a routine calls a subroutine, the current routine's program counter value will have to be saved into the stack. Even without the stack, subroutine calls and returns are possible. But a programmer needs to turn the world upside down in order to have this program execution paradigm to be at a right level. So this is the thing. Stack is the best data structure for any programmer. Now the uh, stack is a storage device that stores the information in such a manner that the item stored in last is going to be first that is going to get retrieved. Very useful for saving written addresses and local variables. One more usage of the stack is in order to store the local variables. What is the local variable? Every time when you uh, declare a function, when you write a function, you're going to pass the parameters to the function and you do have several local variables. All those local variables will be stored into the stack will be pushed into the stack. So stack is essentially the data structure that is going to store primarily the return addresses and the next one is the local uh, variables and the third one is sometimes the stack also is used for storing PSW. What is the PSW? PSW is a flag register. Flag register value will also be saved into the stack every time when an interrupt occurs. So this is the thing with the stack. Now understand how the stack is going to get designed within the system, within the CPU, how the stack is going to organize within a CPU. So let us understand that. Initially, if you want to understand about a stack, first of all, the very first guy that we need to talk about is a stack pointer. Who is a stack pointer? Stack pointer is a guy who is going to hold the topmost locations address, rather the topmost elements address. Stack can have any number of elements. If the stack size is 64 words, let us say at the 32nd word, the, the, you know, the final element is placed. That means that the stack pointer is going to hold the address 32 in which the topmost element is present. Stack pointer size depends on the total size of the stack. Stack pointer will also, uh, of, will also be of some size. What is this size? Understand. In order to understand the register stack boundary, we need to understand what is the stack pointer size. Stack pointer is primarily as a register, right? It's a register. Register meaning we need to have a specific size. We need to design any register with a specific size. But what is the size of the stack pointer? Let us see stack pointer size is sorry. Stack size is equal to 64 words. Okay. If it is 64 words, 64 is equal to 2 power 6. That means that the stack pointer size must be equal to six digits. By using the six digits, stack pointer will be able to locate any address within the stack. And that too, stack pointer needs to hold the address of the topmost element. Primarily, it is going to hold the address. So we need to understand the length of address within a stack. The length of the address within a stack is equal to six bits. So the stack pointer size is equal to six digits if the stack size is equal to 64 words. The other guys who are related to the stack is first one is a data register in addition to the stack pointer. The other people who are related to the stack is there is something called a data register 
and there is something called a stack point already I discussed about a stack point too and the next one is a push and the next one is a pop and and in addition to the push and pop I also do have I also do have two flag registers one is one is full flag and one more is empty flag okay what is a data register data register is the source as well as the destination for the data items within a stack for an instance if you want to push a data element into the stack from where the elements are collected the element will get collected from the data register within the cpu the data register is going to provide you the data items that are going to be pushed into the stack let us say if you want to push an element push a in order to push the element a into the stack you need to get the a initially into the data register right after you transfer it to the data register then if you perform the push operation the element from the data register will be pushed into the stack similarly when you pop out an element what is going to happen the element that is popped out of the stack will get transferred to the data register hence the data register can be considered as both source as well as the destination for the data items that are going to be either pushed into the stack or popped out of the stack and, and I don't need to talk about push and pop push and pop are the regular operation that can be performed on the stack understand something apart from push and pop you cannot access stack except except the operations push and pop you cannot access the stack with any other operations push and pop through only push and pop you will be able to access the stack now understand this now understand this let us get into the actual thing the boundary of a register stack let us understand my stack size is equal to eight words okay the stack size is equal to eight words that means that means I do require three digit for addressing the stack every location will have a three digit address within the stack and the stack pointer size what should be the stack pointer size stack pointer size should be equal to three digits have a look at what is full full is a one bit flag full will be equal to one if the flag is completely full empty is another one bit register it will be equal to one if the flag is completely empty okay now let us understand what are the boundaries of a stack let us say initially the stack is completely empty for an instance the stack is completely empty now the cpu wants to push an element into the stack what exactly is going to happen during a push operation you know that every time when the, when the stack is empty initially stack pointer will show triple zero if the stack pointer shows triple zero that means that the stack is completely empty right now cpu wants to perform a push operation push operation contains two major sub operations what are those initially cpu is going to increment a stack pointer during a push operation sp will be incremented that is stack pointer will be equal to stack pointer plus one that means that stack pointer will be incremented to double zero one okay now right after the stack pointer gets incremented the second operation is, is cpu is going to push the contents of the data register into the memory of the stack pointer stack pointer is one memory of the stack pointer is this one now the contents from the data register let us say for an instance a gets transferred to 001 now what happens stack now has only one and only one element all right so then cpu wants to perform one more push operation again what is going to happen stack pointer will get incremented again right right after which contents of the data register in this instance um, b gets pushed into the stack cpu wants to perform one more push operation at that time again stack pointer will be incremented again right after which 
the contents of the data register in this instance C will get pushed into the stack. Now the stack point two is equal to three right now. Okay, stack point two is showing three. Okay, at some point stack pointer reaches to the final address within the stack. What is sorry stack point? Yeah, stack pointer reaches to the final address within the stack. The final address within the stack is seven. Now when the stack pointer comes here, when it pushes an element, what exactly you can have a what exactly you need to understand? The stack reaches to the maximum address, the final address at which the maximum value of the stack pointer available. The maximum value of an address within the stack is seven, since the total size of the stack is equal to eight. Initially, what happened during the push operation? When the stack pointer at triple zero, stack pointer must get incremented, and the first element will be pushed in the first location. The first element is not being pushed here. Why? The convention is during every push operation, stack pointer should get incremented at the incremented uh, location. We should be able to push the value. So CPU should be able to push the value. So in this scenario, and and when the stack pointer reaches to seven. Let us say an element gets pushed. Now understand something carefully. Here, if you actually can have a look at, stack pointer reaches to the topmost element. Stack reaches to the fag end, right? But still, you can see one more element, one more location in the stack that is triple zero, that the first location of the stack is still empty, right? Will we be able to use that location? Or not? If I ask you, most of the people may say that no, sir, it is not possible because, according to the convention, initially the during the push operation, initially stack point should get incremented right after which we need to perform the the contents of the data register to memory of the stack point. According to the convention, initially we can't use zero. The first uh, uh, item that is going to be pushed into the stack is going to be pushed at the first location. Final uh, content, final uh, element that is going to be pushed into the stack will be pushed at triple one location, which is the final location. We won't be able to store any more location into the stack. No, you're wrong. That means that every time when we design a stack, we sh we should lose one element. We should design the stack at the cost of one element. No, it is not that way. Stack will completely be utilized, no matter what. The design perspective of a stack requires the total elements of the stack should be utilized. For that, simple. If you be sensible, you are going to understand how the final element is going to be utilized. What is the stack pointer size? Stack pointer size is three digits, right? Now, stack pointer value is triple one. The moment x is placed is triple one, stack pointer becomes triple one. Now, I want to push one more element. During a push operation, what is going to happen? The first sub operation that is going to happen during a push operation is SP is equal to SP plus one. Stack pointer value will get incremented. Now SP is equal to triple one plus one. Triple one plus one is equal to one triple zero, right? But understand carefully, stack pointer is of a limited size. Stack pointer is of just three digits because because stack pointer size depends on the number of digits that are required to represent the stack. Now what happens as the stack pointer size is just of since the stack pointer size is just of three digits, the result one triple zero when you increment the stack pointer will not completely be loaded into the stack pointer. Only the least significant three digits will be loaded into the stack pointer. The most significant digit will be discarded. That means that triple one plus one will be equal to triple zero. I hope you got the point. The moment we finish, the moment we reach to the far end of the stack, that is triple one. If we increment the stack pointer for one more time, you will reach triple zero. So obviously, what is going to happen? SP is equal to SP plus one. Now SP becomes. Triple zero, right? At which we are going to push the final element. Let us say final element is equal to Z. You got the thing? You can understand two things here. There is only one boundary for the register stack. If the stack is completely empty, 
or even if the stack is completely full, the boundary is equal to triple zero. When there is no element within the stack where the stack pointer is, stack pointer is a triple zero. Right after you push the final element to the final element into the stack, what is the value of the stack pointer? Stack pointer is triple zero. That means that that means that the first location which has an address double, triple zero is the is the boundary for both ends of the stack even before the stack is full right after the stack is empty so this is what the boundary of a register stack Full is a one bit flag, represent the status of the flag if it is full, will be set to one if it is full. If the SP is equal to zero, that means that a full is equal to one. When we will consider the stack is full, right after you perform a push operation, right after a push operation is performed, if the stack pointer reaches to zero, then that means that, then that means that the stack is completely full. Empty is one more, uh, you know, one bit flag, which is going to show the other status of the stack that is empty. But when we are going to consider the stack is empty right after you perform a pop operation, if the stack pointer reaches to zero, then that means that the stack is empty. Okay, now understand push operation. Initially, stack pointer will get incremented right after which the contents of the data register will be transferred to the memory of the stack pointer. Every time when we perform a push operation, we are going to see if the stack pointer equals to zero. If the stack pointer equals to zero, then full will be equal to one. Okay. If the full is equal to one, then empty will be equal to zero. Okay. Right after every time you perform a push operation, you're going to check, you're going to set the flags. If the flag is full, sorry, if the stack is full, stack can be full after a push operation, right after a push operation. So every push operation will be associated with a checking the flags, rather setting the flags. Right after a push operation, if the stack is full, then we need to set full flag to one. For that, we need to check if the stack pointer equals to zero right after every push operation. Similarly, right after the pop operation, we need to check if the stack pointer is equal to zero. Okay. If the stack pointer equals to zero right after the pop operation, then empty will be equal to one. So what will be the operations within the pop operation, sub operations within the pop operation initially, the contents will get transferred to the data register. Then stack pointer will get decremented. On the other hand, initially in the push operation, stack pointer will be updated right after which the contents of the data register will get transferred to memory of SP. So, so this is exactly, this is exactly how we are going to perceive and understand, understand the boundaries of a register stack. That's it for the session. Anil Prasad Swarampudi signing off. Thank you so much.